His claws sliced the air as he reached for the violet clouds. In the distance, beyond a blackened mountain cliff, soared a sky eel. Galmoria lay sprawled on the sharp stones lining the beach. She breathed hard and slow. Her eyes rolled back into her skull. Ribbons of blood and other fluids laced her pale, jewel-encrusted naked skin. Nearby, her sea wolf stood obediently. I receive your blessing, Galmoria. She purred, lips parted, her forked tongue caressed her fangs. Bless you, my son, and your bitch. Isaac snatched her by the throat and lifted her up. You tried to have my mate killed. He roared and flung her body far into the boiling sea. She splashed and sank like a stone. The sea wolf moaned toward the dark gray heavens above. Good riddance to the cunt. As he walked towards the sea, the large wolf began to shiver and shake. The wolf's body split in half as though an unseen axe had cleaved through it. With a loud thump and splash, the wolf's entrails spilled across the beach and flowed into the sea. Standing between the two halves was Galmoria. Green pants and a green tunic clung to her curves. A green bandana circled her forehead. The wolf's blood and entrails had dyed her raven hair to scarlet red. When she was within arm's reach, she drew a silver sword from her side. Do you like mother's new outfit? Galmoria untied her green robe to reveal a green bra holding her large breasts tightly against her chest. She trailed a finger between her breasts to her navel, where she drew circles in her belly button. You must find the one named Amy in that realm of Bakai. She is the beloved and the key to our evolution. She'll look like this. Galmoria twirled. Her hair turned blonde and she wore denim shorts and a white halter top. Galmoria stuck out her tongue, an oblong-shaped black jewel embedded in the tip. Isaac snatched the jeweled tongue and tore it free from Galmoria's mouth. He glared at its midnight coloring. It should be crimson, not black. He pitched the gem into the water and gripped her neck. I want the Narkush, you devil wench. The skin on her neck turned to flame. Isaac roared and snapped his paw back. It is the Narkush, my foolish son. She held out her open hand. The black devil stone appeared on her palm. It is special and will grant you great strength. It bestows the gift of immortality and indestructibility. With it, you will rule over all the Zodiacs, and none will dare challenge your authority. And what if I refuse this gift? Then I will bestow it upon another Geminis, and you, your whelp, and your future cubs will be enslaved by him, just as the rest of the Zodiacs. If only he could kill the fucking cunt. He took the gem from her. Embed that Narkush onto your mate, then have it transferred to the beloved. She leaned forward and planted cold, bloody lips onto his cheek. I will not expire one of her nine lives without just cause. If you wish to rule as the king of all, then you will do as mother asks. Shedding her clothes, she sauntered toward the sea, still holding the silver longsword. 
Galmoria waded into the waters, turned toward him. With the sword lifted, she began sinking beneath the ocean. The sky, beach, and water dissipated, fading into white. leaving nothing but a distant still silhouette of the drowning blonde girl. As the landscape of the sepia forest loomed closer, Rorn divulged wisdom that could only come from beyond the cosmic realms of life and death and beyond. The longer you remain in this space-time warp, the threat for multiversal destruction is imminent. Remain too long before escaping, and you will return to a distant future of the reality in whence you entered. Or worse, you may never return at all. In either of those cases, the timeline will be ultimately skewed and all universes may suffer beyond comprehension. It has been laid upon me now, a divergence in the proper timeline already, that I must guide you to the cosmic thread wherein you can return to modern Buckeye, Texas. Won't you return as well? I cannot. Ro the Dark Trinity kept to his promise in giving me the position as a spirit guide. It was always my destiny declared by the stars and planets beyond the comprehension of mortal men. The Order mistakened me as a warrior, yet the universal forces beyond flesh and bone never made such follies. Then alone I shall stand against the beast who took your life and took you from me. But you shall not stand alone, my brother. There is another, and soon you will know him and know his role within all of this threatening madness. The pale woodlands of sacred oaks drew near. The trees and shrubbery loomed more gloomily than any lost and forgotten ghost of antiquity. Come quickly, before it is too late. Atticus sprinted after Rorn. Their pace accelerated the closer they drew to the woodland edge. Rorn's wispy silhouette sailed into the somber thicket. Atticus stood beside the cloudy water that rested lifelessly and dull. Yet, upon the ashen wood porch of the nearby Breezeway house was a behemoth scorpion that challenged the size of any stallion Atticus had ever beheld. It capered about the porch, Stinger raised, beckoning his challenge. What monster is this? The gateway thread back to your time is beneath the pond. You must seek it out immediately. I won't leave you. The scorpion crept off the porch and hurried its way toward them. Destiny never meant for you to do this alone. You will find your allies in Buckeye. But you are my twin. The scorpion hurried along the edge of the pond, its beady eyes piercing Atticus. I am not your twin. Rorn shoved Atticus into the pond. 